I don't know who needs to hear this, but I want you to know that the Lord needs you. The Lord needs you. As much as you need the Lord, He needs you. You are the greatest creation of God. Man is the greatest creation of God because when God thought of creating man, the only thing He imagined was Himself. When God thought of creating man, He just imagined Himself. So God needs you. He needs you to know these things that have been spoken here today. When in your greatest pursuit in life, I want you to remember that your name be written in the book of life is the most important thing. Your name can be written as the richest man in the world, the richest man on the planet, the, 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 the most intelligent guy in Castle, the most industrious person. But the greatest thing that will happen to you is for your name to be written in the book of life. So I'll be singing in this song in Hausa. It's titled Sooner Now. And I would like all of us to stand up and sing it together. I just have two minutes to sing the song. Please, let's just rise on our feet and sing this song together. Sunana, 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 Yeshika. Chicken little ray, Sunana, Yala, Sunana, 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 Yashika, Chicken little ray, Sunana, Yala, Sunana, 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 Yashika, Chicken little ray, Sunana, Yala, Sunana. I've been the naked soul, Sunana Yeshika, Chicken Little Fin Ray, Sunana Yana, Sunana, 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 Sunana Yeshika, Chicken Little Fin Ray, Sunana Yana, Sunana, Oh, I've been the naked soul, Sunana Yeshika, Chicken Little Fin Ray. Sunana, 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 Yashika, Chicken Little Ray, Sunana, Yala, Sunana, Sunana, Yashika, Chicken Little Ray, Sunana, 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 Yashika, Chicken Little Ray. So, Sunana Yeshika, Chicken Little Fure, Sunana, Sunana, Sunana Yeshika, Chicken Little Fure, Come on, can you get up? Hey, I'm in the neck, so, Sunana Yeshika, Chicken Little Fure. Sunana, 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 Yashika, Chicken Little Fire. Oh, I've been the neck of soul. Sunana, Yashika, Chicken Little Fire. Say, Sunana, 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 Yashika, Chicken Little Fire. Sunana Yeshiga, 
Chikili tafire How to sing it like you mean it Chesuna, sunana, sunana Sunana, yeshika Chikili tafire Sunana, yana, sunana Sunana, yeshika Chikili tafire Thank you so much. Can we celebrate him, please? You can have your seat. Can we celebrate him, please? Can a round of applause for him once again. Can you celebrate him, please? Can we celebrate? Clap for him as if you are not angry. Can you celebrate him? When he was singing, some people I saw some people closing their eyes. They were about to lift up their hands, but they were confused. Are we in church? Are we not in church? Don't worry, you are safe. As far as you're here, you're safe. Um, okay, so there is a restroom behind behind the hall. So in case you want to ease yourself, you can just go and walk. You can ask the ushers to direct you to where the restroom is. It's just behind the hall. Okay, so without any further waste of time, I want to invite the next speaker. The next speaker is a lover of God and a proficient minister of the Word of God. He is a man of prayer. He is the convener of Temple Breed International and also the convener of Core 50. This is a thriving ministry in Kaduna whose vision is to create a heavenly atmosphere over territories and nurture men into manifesting God's kind of life. Jacob Denham is a serving pastor with the Chris Delvon Gwamna Ministries. He is a fellow of the Council of Regulation of Engineers and an MSc holder from the prestigious ABU Zaria. See, when you see us, we are great. Naturally ahead. You can argue it if you want, but you cannot fight it. We're just naturally ahead. That's how we are. Clap for us if you are ABU. If you are not from ABU, still clap for us. Uh, don't be doing that. <laughs> okay, they will come and bash me very soon. Okay, he's a high profile sought after agro consultant with over 15 years of field experience. The CEO of Agro Agriculture Innovations and Agro Consulting Company. He is the refined, he is refi redefining agriculture. He is also the convener of Core 50, as I said earlier, a vision God gave to him to educate and empower kingdom citizens on the concept and culture of kingdom wealth. He is married to his wife, Gudia, and together they have an amazing son. With a standing ovation, with a round of applause, a thunderous loud of applause, please, can you welcome the convener, our friend, our mentor, please celebrate him very well in the person of Apostle Jacob Denham. Thank you so much, everyone. Please, let's have our seat. Sincerely, I'm greatly elated this uh, afternoon or morning, morning, that every one of us create time to add value to our lives. I'm just going to speak for 30 minutes, and then our brother, Ejimi, is going to come up and continue. You know, some of us are doers. Others are talkers. And some of us know how to talk and do. Some of us know how to talk, talk, talk better. Some of us know how to do better. You understand? So, but I just, I just feel that this morning, someone asked a question that I want to start from. The person asked the question, he said, how, how, how can he become a multi-millionaire from what he is doing now? Because, you know, it's a question in every heart. We, we, we have attended a lot of conferences. We've heard so many speakers discuss all kinds of principles that should guide someone from point A to point B. I think that's the essence of goal setting, isn't it? The essence of goal setting is to move us from point A and then to point B. But let me share my personal growth strategy or how I started Enterprise and how I got to where I am today. I start with the story of a girl I met many years ago. She happens to be one of my mentees. Now, she graduated from school, started looking for a job, and then after about two, three years, she has not gotten the job. Then, she started questioning my anointing, you know that kind of a thing. Say, you are my father in the Lord. You have been praying for me. Why is my job not coming? So I told her, I said, yes, you know, if you are fireful like myself, I said, yes, the Lord is working. The job will come. Let's be patient. 
But consistently, she kept asking, so, sir, when is this job going to come? And I told her, let's keep waiting. The job will come. So one day she called me and she was lamenting on phone. You know, her dad is late, her mother is a widow. So she said, I mean, we are struggling in our family. I need help. I need a way out. I need a job. So I said to her, let's keep praying. Uh, well, while we ended the call, one of my friends happened to work in GT Bank, one of these banks, GT. She called me about the, about the time we ended the discussion. And she said to me, ah, Uncle D, how are you? We just said we laughed and all of those stuff. And then she, I asked her, I said, so what's the challenge? What's happening to you? She said, man, there's only one challenge now I'm facing. And I asked her, what's the challenge? She said, you know, working in the bank, now I have a child, managing banking work and having a child has become a real problem. So I said to her, wow, since you have chosen the banking work, God will help you. So we ended the conversation, and then I heard it in my ears. I thought somebody said she needed a job. So I asked myself, Oga, you know, Oga, now, how many of you know Oga? So I asked Oga, I said, ah, Oga, what do you consign job? And best way give back to Peking. He didn't say anything. So after a while, I heard him again said to my ears, I thought someone said I needed a job. So I said, what are you saying? Just tell me. <laughs> so he said to me, if somebody has a problem, somebody needs a job, the person that has a problem, his problem will be solved when the other person's need is met. So ah, I got it. So I took my phone back and I called my friend who works in the bank, and I said to her, I think I have a solution to your problem. So she said, ah, what's the solution to the problem? I said, I know this girl, oh, very anointed. When she rock babies, babies speak in tongues. <laughs> she has this special grace that she can communicate to children in an exceptional way. So she said, ah, so how does that connect with my problem? I said, you have a child. Don't you need somebody to take away that problem for a while for you? So he said, oh, okay, that's where you are going. I said, yes, that's where I'm going. He said, okay, if that's the case, okay, who is that girl? I said, well, I know her for a long time now. So he said, okay, let me hear how much she will charge. I mean, these people are graduates. They will ask for so much. After all, how much is my salary in the bank? So I said, okay, let me call her. So I called her. You know, that's my other girl that's looking for a job now. I called her and I said to her, babe, I think I have a solution to your problem. She said, what's the solution? I said, I've got you a job. Hey! How could he? Where? <laughs> that was where my first problem started. <laughs> now, you know, I just, I look up, look at that. Ah, where is that? Mm, it's a good job, well-paying job. <laughs> and the job don't have stress. All you have to do is just to, just walk from 8 a.m. and then by 4 p.m. And that's all. So where, where, where is the job? I said, actually, you don't need to go anywhere. You walk from home. Walk from home. What kind of job is that? I said, actually, I have this friend of mine. She has a baby. A baby. I say yes. So what, what does carrying a baby have to do? I say, yeah. So she has this problem. The problem is how to take care of her baby 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So wait, 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 wait. Oh, good, are you saying that she will babysit? <laughs> I said, no, no, actually, I'm not saying you should babysit. I'm only saying you should hold a baby, rock the baby. <laughs> I don't like this kind of thing. What if the baby poop? -poo? What am I going to do? How am I touching poop your baby? I said, do you have a tap in your house? He said, they have a tap. I said, it's simple now. Remove the pamper, set the bomb bomb under the tap, on the tap. <laughs> it's not hard. Just keep the bomb bomb there. Oh, why the bomb bomb? Let's put the baby back. Ah! I said, calm down. I'm not stopping you from looking for your job. Keep looking for your job. It's okay for me. After all, your mom too is doing nothing. So you can bring the baby to your house. When you are busy looking for a job, your mother will help you take care of the baby alongside. And then we are good to go. So she said, so how much will she pay? 
I said, eh, how much do you want her to pay you? She said, she paid like 5K. I said, I didn't give back to you. <laughs> in, our gen- in our generation, we are not smart at all. So I told her, I said, talk good money. I said, eh, I don't, I don't pay like 20K. I said, in a lie. Uncle, do you mean? I can call more than 20. I said, yes. Say okay, I will leave you to add the rest. I said, no problem. So I took my phone. I called this other lady and I said to her, I said, see you. This lady, you know she's a graduate. And you know, you know minimum wage self. How you finish? So please, I want you to look at it very well. We can manage 40. She said, ah, how much is my salary in the bank? If I give her 40, wait till remain. So I said, okay, sorry, sorry. How much, how much, how much? I can give her like 20 now. I said, ah, you try. <laughs> so I carried my phone, called this girl, and I said to her, I think we are good to go, 20K. She said, okay, okay, no problem. So every morning, this woman will bring her baby. She'll collect the baby, take the baby home. Her mother will help her take care of the baby. Why she go about doing her own things? And then two weeks after, I heard that voice again came back to me. And the voice said to me, say, Jacob, you love Coke, isn't it? I said, I love Coke. You even preach about coke. I said, they preach about coke. <laughs> Those of you who don't drink coke, your spiritual life is not strong yet. <laughs> and something powerful about drinking coke. How many of you believe what I'm saying? Something powerful about drinking coke. Don't mind all those sugar things. It's not real. Oh. <laughs> Drink a- Oh, see somebody. That's my brother. You are born again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, so, ah, so we agreed. Say, so, okay, no problem. 20K every month. So the Holy Ghost asked me, say, if you, if, you, if you drink Coke and you enjoy it, don't you normally recommend it for other people? I said, I they recommend them now. He said, so if, if the job she's doing has been a good job, why is the other lady not recommending other people? Ah, so I got it. So I now carried my phone. And I said to her, I have a suggestion for you. But this one will cost you a little fee. She said, oh, I said, it's just your tight. He said, okay. What's the suggestion? I said, simple. Have you been taking care of baby well? She said, yes. Is the woman excited about your... She said, yes. Everything is fine. So I said, how come the woman have not recommended you to any other person? She said, ah, she has not thought about it like that. So she carried her phone, called my friend, GT. Hey, ma, have I been taking care of your baby well? She said, yes. Is the baby complaining? No. Is there any challenge? He said, no. <laughs> ha! So wait, 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 wait. No complaint whatsoever, ma. She said, no complaint whatsoever. So, so how come you have not recommended me to your friends if I've been doing well? Ah, sorry, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know you can take more children. Then she carried her phone. Ah, Ronka, I know somebody. Ah, Aisha, I know somebody. Ah, before the end of that month, we had 10 children in our mother's house. 20, 20,000 era each. So let's do the mathematics. 20,000 times 10. How much? 200,000. How many of you? Wait, oh, wait, don't raise your hand. Answer in your heart. How many of you are working where they pay you 200,000? Don't, don't answer in your heart. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Okay. Because the economy is strong. <laughs> They are slashing salaries by two. <laughs> All right? So, at the end of the month, now we have 10 children, 20,000 each, 200,000 bagang a lot. So, one day I asked her, I said, I think wisdom is profitable to direct. This time around, my tight should increase again because I have another suggestion. What's the suggestion? <laughs> I said to her, don't you think it's high time we turn this into a daycare? <laughs> Today, as I'm talking to you, it's one of the most functional daycare in Lagos. What began with one, 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 one common sense. My first principle of entrepreneurship, humility. You know, these principles are unkillable. I realize in life that 90% of the wealthy people I know are humble people. Because sincerely, the pathway to wealth will require your humility. Why? 
Because sometimes the voice will tell you to do something that may temper with your ego. Are you with me? Are we together? You see, we are kingdom people. We should naturally be ahead. Are we together? The first principle I have learned, I'm talking about myself. The first principle I have learned is that I've learned the principle of humility. That if you learn humility, if you practice humility, you will naturally be ahead. As a matter of fact, the force of life will aid your journey upward. Have you read your Bible? The Bible says God resists the proud, but he giveth what? Grace. Do you, do, you know, do you know who is resisting who is proud? It is God. It means that the man is trying to rise, but God will put his leg on his head so that he does not rise because of pride. I asked some people a question one day. I went to speak somewhere. I asked them, what is the business of Angote? Say, ah, the richest black man. I said, eh, he's the richest black man. What is his business? What does he do? He said, ah, he's a billionaire dollar. I said, calm down. What, what is he said? What is he doing? Ah, they sell. Okay, okay, they said, what is he selling? He's selling salt. He's selling sugar. How many of you can sell sugar? I have a master's from maybe You see, you need humility to be prosperous. I'm telling you my life story. What do I do as a business? I, 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 I am into agro consulting. Listen to this. That's my voice. It's okay. Pra test it. Test it before we finish. So that it will come out clear because they will all go with it. <laughs> Alright? So there's somebody asked me, so what do you do? What's your business? I said I'm into poetry. Poetry business. I said, but you, apostle, you should be doing... <laughs> I said, that's why you, you are poor. I took up a farm. The farm had 1,000 birds. 1,000 birds. 1,000 laying birds. So one day I sat down there and I was thinking to myself, if there is always a problem, there's always a solution. And the kind of people you partner with to solve a problem matters a lot. Too. You know, this is one of the principles that raise my finances from tens and hundreds of thousands to millions of naira. To my friend that asked that question. So then, Olam, I don't know if you know Olam Hashri and all. Olam just came into Kaduna, newly then. And then they are trying to find people they can partner with. Because they discovered that one of the major problems of farmers in Kaduna is that most of the farms in Kaduna and Nigeria at large were shutting down. So how do we solve the problem? So I said, okay, since they have that problem, I'll give them the solution. Because I found out that the reason why most of the farms are closing down was simply, number one, because the people could no longer afford to take care of their birds. Because the cost of feeding birds was, was getting higher, and then all the input for all this production was also getting higher. So I met the general manager. Those of you who have interacted with them, there's this Indian they call Vinod. I, I sent a proposal to him, invited him. He came to our place. And we sat down to talk. And I said to him, I think I know one of the ways we can be able to revive these poetries that are folding up. He said, oh, what was the solution? And I said to him, I said, why don't you people come in as, outgrow come in as, as suppliers of inputs for outgrowers so that the farmers can revive their farms, you provide the birds, you provide the feeds, you provide the vaccines and the doctors, and then the farmers will take care of the birds to point of lay. And then after that, you pay the farmers a commission. And they agreed. They said, wow, nice idea. So they went back, sat down with their Indian mindset, and they come up with a humongous concept. And then finally, we started. Now, and then we had just 1,000, don't forget, 1,000 birds. So I went to my boss. And I said to him, I said, sir, I think we're about to become millionaires. What do we do? I said, okay, we need to build more pens. Each one of those pens is going to cost us around six million. And we needed to build 15 of such pens. So how do we do it because we don't have the money? So I said to him, it's simple. In your church, you have people who have the money. And it's the same thing. You know, one of my problems with investment is that a lot of investment is failing in Nigeria. But I asked one investor a question one day. I said, 
if I give you all the money and ask you to pay 30% every month, will you be able to deliver? Do you understand the question? Uh, I'm not saying everybody go and do investment. So finally they agreed. So we started. So he went to the church, talked to his people, and they agreed. So we agreed to pay 100% on every investment. So if you put 6 million, we're going to give you 12 million after two years. Wow. Even me, I'll go and borrow money and put it. It's a powerful investment. So quickly, in less than six months, we had built 14 pens, 6 million each. Then Olams brought the birds, brought everything. And then we grow the farm from 1,000 to 200,000 birds. Today is one of the largest farms we have in Kaduna. While I'm doing that small point of lay business, I met some young people. It's called commission-based marketing. All they do is that they come... I'm showing you opportunities, though. All they do is that they come to our farm. Sir, I have a client. Give me access to your poultry. I will bring it, I will market it, and I will add 15. I say, no problem, go ahead. So you will see them, they will come. And when they come, we are the Ayaro boys. They say, how are they now? They say, ah, okay. welcome, sir. <laughs> we give them free access. So they will bring their clients, take them into the pen. They will see, ah, no, it's good, it's good, it's good. So when they go to the point of payment, they are adding 15 euro on each of the bets that the person is buying. I have seen not one, not two, not three, not four, not five of those boys earn millions of naira every three months, four months when we are rolling out those birds. There was a particular year I saw one boy, he made up to four million naira adding 50 naira. 50 naira. You see, you see, let me have your bio, babe. You see, this thing is how much? Is how much? Maybe 50 naira or 100 naira. You see, is it possible that there are people, organizations, that are sustained by the 50 15 era of this biro? Is it possible that there are people that are taking their families on vacation on 50 15 era? Is it possible that there are children that are going to school because you are buying 50 15 era biro? Which means the little things that we are despising are the things that are making many millionaires. Can we? We are kingdom people. We are naturally by birth humble. Can we learn the way of humility that the little things we are despising could be the very things that are supposed to be making us millionaires? Actually, we all know how to spend, but we know little about how to earn it. And the principle of earning it is more important than the principle of spending it. I have never seen a motivational speaker or an entrepreneurship speaker that have ever spoken on how to spend. Because everybody knows how to spend but the principle of earning it is oftentimes the most difficult part of the equation. So my, my advice to us is that when you are, when we are talking, when a Jimmy comes up by 12 o'clock to start talking, when God's will lawyer comes up to start talking, when Elisha Maman comes up to round up, I want you to pay attention to the voice that will tell you what you need to start doing. And when that voice tells you what you need to start doing, please and please, be humble enough to carry the baby's bum bum to the tap and on it for water to wash it for you. Don't be too egocentric to start, no matter how small it will take you to start. Let us, let us, let us remove our suit. This suit is for this meeting. You know? After this meeting, I remove my suit. I wear my joggers. I am in the field. I have a farm in Iburi. It's 130 hectares. We are farming maize and rice. But my hands is still soft. My wife can testify to that. Are you with me? Because we have found better ways to do these things. I believe God, none of us should be broke again after this conference. Whatever the instruction that you get, whatever the instruction that you receive is, put it to use. Go back home and sit down and start it. You know, Uncle Isaiah said, we don't need a business plan to start some of this. Sometimes over-rationalizing is what is crippling our advancement. Sometimes we need to start first, then come back and build the plan around the thing that we have started. Are we together? So let us come down a little from our higher horses. When you have made the money, you can go back to your pride. At least, you know, money has a way of making you loud. 
One of my friends posted on his DP, funny enough to say, he said, every man has a voice, but, but money makes your voice louder. <laughs> I don't know what he meant by that anyway. So, but that's my personal principle on entrepreneurship. Number one, have, possess that, that nature, that virtue of humility. Start it. If you need to start it small, start it. My second principle of entrepreneurship, never give excuse. Never give excuse. Ah, you can write this down. In my life, I have found out that the more I reduce my excuses, the better my life becomes. The less my excuse, the better my life becomes. The more I reduce my excuse, the better my life becomes. So every time I give excuse for anything, my life becomes more compounded. Thank you, sir. So my question is, what's your perfect excuse? What's your perfect excuse? My mentor, Peter J. Daniels. How many of you know him? He's not very popular in Africa. Very few of us know him. He's one of the persons that wrote one of the most expensive books in the world. The book is worth $1,000. If we convert it to current currency of our time, that's over 500,000, Abby. Over 500,000 naira for that book. Meeting that man changed my life forever, my finances forever. One of Peter J. Daniel's principles is that we should not give excuses. Don't give excuses. I ask you a question. If you were to be Noah, will the world have been saved or will it have drowned? Because the more excuses we give, the more compounded our lives become. I reduce my excuses every day. So I, I wake up every morning. I have 101 reasons why I shouldn't do what I need to do. But I will force myself to do them because I know the lesser my excuses, the better my life becomes. i give you an example. C7, Ronaldo. My friend told me a very interesting story about him. I don't know how true it is, but I have not verified, but I found out that. Probably it's true because one day I listened to one of his interviews on YouTube. They asked him. They said, somebody want to know what is the one thing you are doing that has made you exceptional? And he said, there is nothing as skills without hard work. Which means you can be a genius and be a mediocre. And yes, somebody without skills can put himself under discipline and hard work and become a better person. So my friend told me, he said, Cristiano Ronaldo has a work ethic. He said, the work ethic is that every morning... Maybe 5 a.m., for example. Something wakes him up. When he wakes up in the morning, those of you that is fun, you can confirm if it's true or not. He said he, there is a particular position in his room that he must be standing there. And by the time he gets to that position and stand there, there is a machine by the side that will shoot a ball from the other end. And then the ball will come to the exact location where he's standing. So, if he's not in that location at that point in time, the ball will fly and the ball will fall off. So, Ronaldo has to be at that location every morning by that particular time. So, that as the ball is coming, Ronaldo holds the ball. And as Ronaldo holds the ball, Ronaldo moves straight to the pitch to start training. You know, we have set alarm. Say, say, let me, let me wake up 5 a.m. 5 a.m. So you adjust your alarm 5 a.m. You keep it. 5 a.m. Let me, just five minutes, five minutes. Five more minutes. And before you realize, you will become like that lady uncle spoke about. I love my sleep. A little sleep, a little slumber, and so by that time, every morning, he's standing there. The ball comes. He grabs the ball straight to the pitch to train. Every morning, he makes sure he keeps that routine, like you have said. Every morning, he makes sure he's standing at that particular location. Because every time you delay your training, you are increasing your journey to greatness. Have you not heard about Usain Bolt? One day they asked Usain Bolt, they said to him, Usain, 
What's the one thing you are doing that is making you a great person? Usain Bolt said, the one thing that is making me a great person is the one thing that is the thing that I don't like doing. So they asked him, what is that one thing? He said, my trainings. He said, every morning I have to go to do this training. That's the one thing I don't like doing. He said, but I found out that the more I train, the better I become. The more I train, the more I sustain my statue as the fastest runner on earth. So, so, so if your alarm wakes you and you decide not to wake up, that means you are prolonging your journey to greatness. If, if you keep giving reasons why the weather is too cold, I need to stay in bed. My blanket, you know that early morning breeze. You draw your blanket, you cover. Every time you give excuses, you are elongating your journey to greatness. So what do we do? We cut down on our excuses. See, somebody said we should always do, when we are in business, we should always do what people like. My personal principle is that in business, you must not do what everybody likes. So. Because sometimes you will have to do what the people like, not what you like. It's the principle of entrepreneurship. If you are selling beans as your only means of business, maybe that's the only thing you sell for a living. And you have a restaurant that you're selling beans. Not everybody that likes beans. Which means at the end of it, or if you like beans, you'll be the one to be eating your beans. So the idea is that you have to sometimes look out for what is the thing that the people like. Because it is the people that will buy it. You are not the one that will buy your thing. So you have to find it. What is it that they like? And how do they like it? And make it that way. We are kingdom people. God needs your money to thrive on to advance his kingdom. God needs our influence to advance. Imagine a whiskey being a born again believer with that level of influence. See the level of grounds we can cover as believers. I'm telling you earlier when we started the opening remarks, I said to you, I said to you, we've started a school in Mina. The school currently has over 200 children. These 200 children, free education, free uniform, free textbooks, and the teachers are paid. And we are paying them from our personal possession. From what the Lord has blessed us with, that's what we are using to advance the school. Currently, we've started one in Kano and Katsina as well. Now the young people are coming and they are giving their lives to Christ while we are teaching them. Now CBN are partnered with us to give us borehole in every location we go to. Come on, guys. Why should you choose to be a mediocre when there are many other people we can affect with the kingdom, with our finances? Don't give excuses. No excuse is good enough. If, if you leave this meeting today, I can tell you 101 reasons why you should give an excuse. And I mean, you have been giving the excuses, but what has the excuses changed? I don't have fun to start the business. But I'm showing you how you can do commission-based marketing and earn the capital to start the business. Let us make sure that we don't give excuses. After you leave this meeting today, don't say, I don't have fun. Look for the people who have the fun and share your ideas with them. And make sure that they are sincere people they don't steal your idea away from you. Are we together? Let us not give excuses. Let us not give excuses. Whatever it will take you to get it done, get it done. If you have to wake up every morning, if you believe in the dream, enough. If you believe that this thing that you have received is truly from God, you will be ready to have sleepless nights to get it done. You will be ready to stay long hours working to get it done. Let's stop giving excuses. Our body is ready to adjust. Our body is ready to carry us. There's something in boxing, they call it goat. Goat means greatest of all time. That means this boxer is the greatest boxer that has ever lived. But every one of these boxers, when you sit down with them, they have the same story. They have to grind it. Grinding it means they have to work it out, sweat it out, and then become what they have become. Let's reduce our excuses. Say, I know the economy is bad. In the same economy, I'm not, I'm not clapping for Buhari in any way. But you see, the more you give excuses, the more you have reasons to fail. Let's reduce our excuses at all costs. Let's make sure that we're not giving excuses. Whatever it will take me, I will, I will do it to get it done. If it means I have to stay awake all night, stay awake all night and get it done. If it means you have to give away something so that you can be able to get what you are looking for, do it. Reduce your excuses. Are we together? What level, what level of excuse do you want to give? We don't have excuse anymore. Many years ago, I remember. Welcome, sir. Come and sit down, ma. Come. Don't worry, sir. It's fine. We have enough seat. Come, ma. 
Don't worry, we are just doing the protocol of host and speaker. <laughs> Welcome. That's Pastor Jimmy, celebratively. I'm just trying to hold the font for him. I'm not supposed to speak. <laughs> All right? So we don't. We refuse to give excuses. We refuse to give excuses. We must reduce our excuses at all costs. You leave this meeting, there is, the, 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 the concept is going to come for you on how to put A and B together to get the funds that are necessary. Don't say there's no money in the system. It's a lie. There's money in the system. Don't say people are not ready to help me. One man said it one day in the days of Jesus. He said, I have nobody to help me. That was not the question. He's giving an excuse for a genuine reason to stand up from the ground. Some people love their poverty. They love to romance with poverty. They're asking you, do you want to prosper? You are still saying that huh, people who have money, ah, I wish sure that all their money is clean. What's your business with their money with being clean or not? You make your own money and give an example. Are we together? I, I don't like sitting around people who are saying, all oh, these people making money, who is sure that their money is clean? And I'm not giving excuses for Yahoo boys. Neither am I giving excuses for corruption. But I'm saying that if there are adequate patterns, there will be less Yahoo boys. Are you listening to me? The Yahoo boys are going to do Yahoo because there are not enough patterns to show how these things ought to be done. You must rise up and become a pattern for somebody to follow. Let's stop giving excuses. You now imagine, look at how many, how many we are in this hall. Imagine every one of us, ev once every year, because this is the goal of COP50. Let's assume once every year we decide to come together and put together 10, 10 million. 10, 10 million for, for, for invasion of rural areas. I mean, these things are possible. We are doing it in Mina with 200 children, I've said to you. We are doing it in Kano with 50 children. We are doing it in Casina with 60 children. We are giving them free education, free textbook, free exercise, book, free uniform. We are gathering the money from amongst ourselves. And yet, as they are receiving the education, they are receiving Christ. Because everywhere Christ goes, civilization follows. Yeah. Let's wake up and stop giving excuses. Let's do everything it takes for us to advance the course of the kingdom. I'm telling you, if God can trust you, you put resources in your hands. I ask you a question. What's going to be your perfect excuse when you leave this place? What's going to be your perfect excuse when you leave this place? Will your perfect excuse be, will your perfect excuse be, is because I am from a poor background. Let me ask you that. Because if your perfect excuse is, I am from a poor background, why you are still standing there? Do you notice how Jesus puts it in the book of Luke chapter 11? Luke chapter 11 verse 31, Jesus said, on that day, on that day, some people will come and say, ah, it's because knowledge is very expensive. Jesus will say, okay, Queen of Sheba, show. Queen of Sheba will come and stand. You have no excuse. So, ah, on that day, somebody will come have an excuse. What's his excuse? Ah, because I came from a poor background. Then God will say, Matthew Ashimoro, show. My Shimon will come and tell you, I was hooking bread in Zaria. But see what the Lord has done. He will come and say, ah, ah, I didn't go. I didn't do much. Only because I didn't know the way. You didn't know the way? Moses, come. Then Moses will show. I didn't know the way, but I went there. Ah, no, I didn't know the location. That's why. Abraham, show. Abraham will come and stand. We will be without excuse. That's what Jesus is saying. Yeah. Nobody on that day will have a good and a perfect excuse. All our excuses will be useless on the day we start to give account of our potentials that he has invested in us. Let's reduce our excuses. Let's stop. In fact, let's cancel excuses. We will get better. And our nation too will be better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.